Who doesn't love a little Transfer Tuesday? I love me a little Transfer Tuesday. It's Tuesday, meaning we're talking about transfer players that are going to make an impact on your television screens this fall that you need to be aware of. That's kind of our mission here at Locked On College Football, get you ready for the next season in the greatest sport on planet Earth, which is a rapidly evolving and changing landscape, of course. But let's talk about a couple of guys and start in East Lansing. There's a new head coach up there, new sheriff in town by the name of Jonathan Smith. He he brought a quarterback with him. It was not DJ Uyunglele. No, he's down at Florida State in the quarterback carousel. That's, that's Mike Norvell's new signal caller come 2024 as they look to go undefeated again that might be difficult but certainly not impossible in the ACC and Florida State's brought in a lot of talent Michigan State I'd say has brought in some talent some really solid talent Childs is the most notable transfer portal addition they've added this offseason because he plays the most important position in all of college football. I think for both Aiden Childs and Malik Murphy at Duke, who I'll get to in just a, a little bit here, expectations should be tempered. They should be mild for these two guys who are tremendously talented individuals. But let's start with Aiden Childs. He was one of the highest rated quarterback recruits in the history of Oregon State football. He comes to Michigan State by way of the transfer portal in which 24-7 sports viewed him as one of the top options available in the transfer portal. East Lansing is able to now support him going forward. And Aiden Childs comes in with, wait for it, zero, zero, career starts. This is a guy who has immense potential. He's got the size. He looks the part. He moves well. Big arm. He can throw it down the field. You know what he doesn't have? You know what he doesn't have that you can't force in practice? You can't make happen in practice? Experience. He doesn't know what it's like to rebound from an interception. He didn't throw one last year. He didn't throw that many passes. In fact, in the games in which he appeared, he didn't throw more than eight passes in any of those games for Oregon State. Now, he got regular action. He even, and this is a good thing for Michigan State fans as it pertains to 2024, he even saw action when the game was still in doubt. It was sort of a long-term play for Jonathan Smith if he did not end up getting another job and stayed at Oregon State. They were trying to, at least how it looked from afar, incentivize Aiden Childs to stick around. Easy to do that when you're getting on the field, you're a part of the offense, you're leading important drives. It's not like he really brought anything to the table that DJ Uyunglele couldn't do. They just didn't want him to hit the portal this offseason. That's, of course, mildly ironic, perhaps largely ironic, looking back on it now with how things have unfolded. But Aiden Childs has never thrown more than eight passes in a game. He's never thrown an interception. He only knows what it's like to go in for a brief amount of time, maybe lead a touchdown drive. Now, the good news is he's got his same head coach and his same offensive coordinator. He's got his same tight end, too. Jack Velling comes over. He's got one of his interior offensive linemen in Tanner Miller. They came over with him from Oregon State. They go from Corvallis to East Lansing. So there are some portal pieces for the Spartans. But boy, they, they were not starting at a very strong place. And they brought in a respectable transfer portal class, a decent top 40 high school recruiting class. This is not going to be a year in which Aiden Childs comes in, puts on a Superman cape, and soars the Spartans back to Big Ten contending world. That's not going to take place. What is going to take place is Spartan fans, hopefully, looking at a young quarterback and allowing him to get everything out of the way as it pertains to growth and making mistakes and getting better and improving. Because when a guy has never, again, thrown more than eight passes in a game before, there's going to be an adjustment period. His potential is immense. He's got two really good offensive coaches in Jonathan Smith and Brian Lindgren, his OC. He is going to be a really good starting quarterback in the Big Ten. Can you expect him, though, to step in right away and even be one of the top five guys in the Big Ten next year or one of the top three guys if you you know parcel it out to what's a good ratio for what's a really good quarterback in the Big Ten when you have 18 teams and whatnot. Let's just go top five. Is Aiden Childs cracking the top five? I don't think you can put him there because there is still an element to his game in which he is Schrodinger's cat, a fantastic scientific thought experiment in which a cat, hypothetically, is locked in a box. And you don't know whether or not the cat is dead or alive until you open the box. 
And as you stare at the box, you can reasonably justify the cat being alive or dead. You don't know how long the cat's been in there. You don't know if there are holes in the box, all sorts of things you don't know. So really, you can't figure out whether or not that cat is going to move when you open the box until you open the box. And so for Aiden Childs, this is going to be his open the box season. This is going to be the year in which you see, okay, he showed glimpses at Oregon State. He played real drives in competitive games against good teams with real defenses at the power five level. Can you do that over the course of an entire game? That's the question. And he's not going to be tested until the middle of the season in a significant way. The first four games for Michigan State, very winnable. I expect them to win at least two. They could win three. They're not playing the toughest opponents in the world. Then, then things get a little challenging. They get, they, they, they get a little, little tricky here. It goes like this. This is four consecutive games for Michigan State. Ohio State at Oregon. Last time Jonathan Smith was there, he had a better team in Corvallis and lost 31 to 7. And Oregon's had a great offseason via the transfer portal. Hosting Iowa, not going to be a lot of points in that one. And at Michigan. If they win one of those games, that'd be outstanding. 0 and 4 is possible. 0 and 4 is possible. And that's going to be a real test for a guy that, yeah, he completed almost 70% of his passes last year. You saw the potential. But there's still room. To, there's going to be room to grow. Mistakes will be made. You look at a guy like Cade Klubnik, who came in for DJ Uyunglele in the 2022 season. He made a lot of mistakes. He's still trying to get better. That's what should be allowed for Aiden Childs. A similar logic applies to Manny Diaz's quarterback over with the Blue Devils. His quarterback is Malik Murphy, who comes to Duke by way of Texas. He was a former four-star recruit. He had schools like Alabama and Arizona and a litany of other Power 5 schools going after him. He was the backup to Quinn Ewers, who is one of the Heisman favorites going into next year, as he should be with Steve Sarkeesian in the offseason that Texas has had, bringing in guys like Isaiah Bond, another former Oregon State player, and Silas Bolden at wide receiver. They've done some really, really good work over there in Austin. I expect them to be one of the top teams in the SEC. And Malik Murphy goes to Duke. A place that has shown it can flash, but not sustain. Much like North Carolina, ironically. They're the opposite of what they both are in basketball. They had a top 10 matchup the other day. Great game as always. Great atmosphere over there in Chapel Hill. But guess what? This, this, this is the football world. This is locked on college football, as we like to call the show. And so for Malik Murphy, he goes to Duke and is certainly the more veteran of these two quarterbacks. That doesn't make him supremely experienced. And, and by the way, the potential, very real. The production so far, more extensive. You have a bigger amount of, of, of passes. You have, a, you have more to analyze with Malik Murphy than you do with Aiden Childs. But so far, the results have been mm, okay. They won a couple games on a team that was able to go to the college football playoff, mind you. They scraped by in a couple. They also have, have got a situation in which their head coach was a really, really good offensive play caller. Well, now Malik Murphy is going to Duke, where Manny Diaz is his head coach. And we'll see how that offense looks. Though here's the thing. I think both of these pairings could be conference contenders in a year or two, whether that's Smith and Childs or Diaz and Murphy. I think Manny Diaz and Malik Murphy are more likely to get there. When you think of Manny Diaz, you think of, well, he was fired. Miami didn't want him. He was 21 and 15. Does that sound bad? He had an eight and three season in there. They were inside the top 25. And then they, he went seven and five. And, and then after he left, they went five and seven. And this past year, they went seven and six. Is Manny Diaz a bad coach? I don't think so. I don't think he's bad. I don't know if he's great. Kind of like Malik Murphy. They're a perfect tandem, these two. Because I've seen little glimmers of potential. I just haven't seen a full body of work yet. And if you think about the ACC and the contenders that will be there, assuming nothing changes radically on that front in college football over the next couple of seasons, what do you think about? You probably think about, well, Florida State, Clemson, and kind of anybody's game, isn't it?
Murphy, in his two starts last year, went 35 of 62. He only threw for 209 yards per game. He had three touchdowns and three picks. Those were his two starts. They were two wins. That's why he's going to Duke. You have a guy who's proven he's capable of winning at the Power 5 level. But to say that either of these guys could come in and be all-conference performers and lead their teams to 8, 9, or 10 win seasons this year, I don't think anybody's in that sort of mindset, and I don't think they should be. I think both of these guys should be allowed to do what quarterbacks have historically always needed to do. Needed to do. Learn, grow, improve, get better, and look for them to pop in 2025. Second year in the system, second year with some teammates, they'll have second year head coaches, whereas right now they've got first year head coaches and there's a transition in place. It's a difficult thing to try to try and do. And I think that both of these guys can succeed with their head coaches and win football games. I don't think there should be big expectations for either going into 2024. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.